How are you doing today, Mark? Uh, you know, I'm usually up here talking mainly about myself, you know, and I have shared about my family, you know, what kind of family upbringing I had, you know, I was like the third generation, you know, but as I could remember when I'm a small, I was really, really, really young, you know, um, I used to go to my grandmother's house and I used to see my uncles and, you know, they'd be in there ironing for about four or five hours right there on the top counter, you know what I mean? They'd be smoking weed and they'd be asking my grandma for their guns back and then their dope back and, you know, she would give it back to them. She would put it away every night you know every night when they would come home they'd stash their shit and my grandmother knew where all the stash spots were so she used to get them bring them back and give them to them you know what I mean I remember we used to be in front of my grandmother's house and they used to tell us once the lights went on we were no longer allowed outside and we used to go inside and like stated before everybody slept on the floor you know and I remember a couple times when my uncle and his homies would be in the front you know what I mean they were in the front one time and my homegirl was out there with them and she was right there kicking it and uh, she had went inside the house to use the bathroom while well, somebody had knocked on the door so she went to the door and she opened it and there was a dude out there with a 12 gauge shotgun and he shot her right in the face he shot her in the face when he shot her in the face the door shut well my cousin went and opened the door she started screaming I mean she had pellet holes all over her face her, my older girl, homegirl's name is Patsy she had them all over her face and after months and months after she had came out of the hospital she would always be able to pull BBs out of her face, you know what I mean? And my homies were really upset about that. They, they had shot one of my homegirls. And she was one of my main homegirls. Her name was Patty. Her brothers, her sisters, her mom. They were all from our hood, you know? So it was a lot of family and orientated stuff. So when she had got shot, she ran to my grandmother's house. She lived, but now she's disfigured. You know, I had seen her maybe 20 years later. And it looked like she had a lot of acne scars. But what it was was those pellets were still coming out of her face. What they were doing was her body was rejecting them. So they were coming out of her face. The following day, the dudes came back again. And my aunt used to have a, a, a blue Volkswagen. It used to be parked on the side of the house. And I guess my uncle was in there fixing the radio. And the guys let off with them with the same shotgun. And there was a big asshole on the side of the car. You know, she used to drive around with a big old buckshot on the side of her car, you know, and everybody knew that where she lived and who she was because that, that car would always be parked there. There wasn't only holes right there, there was holes by the ceiling, holes by the living room kitchen, you know, and thank God my grandmother or grandfather had never got shot. The only ones that did get shot right there were was my uncle, both my uncles. My cousin got shot there. I got shot a lot, a lot of times there, you know what I mean? And finally, I guess the city got fed up because my grandmother was there for so long, like 30, 35 years in that house, maybe 40. And that's about two generations, three generations coming through, you know what I mean? And me and my little brother were the last ones that she actually took care of. But she also had one of my other aunts that was in Metropolitan Hospital. She just went berserk sometimes. I knew when I first met her that she wasn't always there because she would offer me cigarettes and I was only like eight, nine years old. And I would tell her, hey, I don't smoke, you know what I mean? If grandma catches me smoking, oh, don't worry about it, mijo, you can come in my room and smoke. So I used to go in there and smoke with her. This is after I learned how to smoke cigarettes with my father. I remember she used to smoke those parlemets. And those are the nasty cigarettes you think of, but she used to smoke uh, the parlays and she used to go out dancing to nightclubs with her homegirl. And they used to go to this thing called, uh, I think it was called uh, Shears or Sh Chandeliers or something like that, but it was a, it was a strip joint slash uh, bar. And they had went with three of my homies one time and they went over there and they were partying and shit. As soon as they were leaving the place, a dude came out of his car with a 22 rifle and he shot. Everybody that was in the car and shot him at least five times. The passenger died because they said the bullet hit his hip, went up through his heart, down back through his lungs, his lungs and came out the back. And I was like, I didn't really believe that, you know, that a 22 would do that much damage. But I remember reading back in the days that when the monsters used to take somebody down in Italy and stuff, they used to use a small caliber of weapon because it didn't make too much noise. They would place it in the back of the ear and they would shoot it one time and the person was dead, you know what I mean? So, you know, I used, to, I used to conjure that up in my mind, you know, how am I going to catch somebody slipping? Where could I catch them slipping? Because, you know, they had a lot of homies. They outnumbered us. They might outnumber us about 
about 100, 100 more than us. And they were really active. They were in Pico Rivera. They were around for as long as we were around. We went to war with them like about, shit, I say like 55, 1955, 56. And we went all the way up to war with them until, nine, until the year 2009 or something like that. We were just going at it, killing each other left and right. And I remember I got out of prison, and I was fresh out of prison. I was smoke, I was swole, and I go to my park and I see dudes playing football and shit. You know what I mean? I ask my homie, hey, "Who's that?" You know, and he tells me who it is, and I'm like, "What? Fuck that!" I take off my fucking jacket, my pullover. I'm like, "I'm gonna fuck one of these dudes up." Well, as soon as I got to where the guy was at, my homies intervened and they told me, "Hey man, if you touch this dude, we're gonna have to regulate you." And I was like, "Excuse me, I ain't never been regulated." I ain't never been south sided. I ain't never been just smashed beyond recognition. But I have been scolded in a very, very strong way by my older homies because I used to be the type of individual, if I had a gun, I'd be showing it off, cruising around everywhere, pointing it at people, shooting at people. You know, we cruised up on the side of a car one time, and I was going to get this guy. We wanted him bad. I was going to get him. And his old lady sits up right in front of the barrel, and I'm like, I'm young, so I'm saying, well, fuck her, I'll shoot her too. So I went to shoot, boom, missed her, ended up hitting the other dude. Well, they started coming to my house every weekend. Every weekend they would come like clockwork. And I mean, these dudes were so, these dudes had balls because what they would do is they would park down the street and they would walk to my home, stand in the front, four or five of them, and just light the whole house up. This house, this house has said I had so many bullets on it and so many shootings and stuff that the city was trying to buy my grandmother out. They were trying to buy her out for like 10, 20 years, and they couldn't get her out because right after that, uh, uncle came along, came along my Uncle Charles. I don't want to say their full names, but now my Uncle Charles, he was a straight fool. He taught me and my little brothers and my cousins everything we knew. He, we used to wake up in the morning with him, eat breakfast. He had a homemade pull-up bar that he had made out of cast iron. We used to do pull-ups on that every morning, smoke a little bit of bud, do some more, more weights in the morning. And you figure, I'm a young man, I ain't gonna blow up and be some big old hog. But I was getting a little healthy. And when I noticed the first time I went to juvenile hall, you know, there's no mandatory workout or anything like that, but you have so much time on your hands. You're in there 23 hours a day. The only time you come out is for TV break, which is 45 minutes, and then a smoke break where you can smoke, you know what I mean? I've been a lot of places, a lot of programs, but the main program that sticked out was Boys Republic and Scudder. Now, Cam Scudder stuck out because everybody's air gang related, and right down the way, they have all the women gang related. So if we did good, the women would come and kick it with us, and we'd get to swim with them, you know, do dirty things to them under the water, you know what I mean, get close to them. And the staff didn't really matter. So that was my first stop camp, you know what I mean? It was then, it was, I was at camp. I get out into the streets, and now my cousin Rudy's there. Rudy's about two years older than me, and this guy has some sick-ass hands I'm talking about. He punches you from the hip and straight knocks you out. I've seen him do it to several people. But, oh, I don't know, I mentioned one time we're in Chino, and they're telling me, hey, Johnny, your cousin got to get his regulation, man. I told him, look, do yourself a favor and don't send those guys in there with him because those guys are going to get hurt. Well, then believing that my cousin wasn't shit, he's thin, he don't look all that big, he don't work out, that he was going to put hands on him. So what they did was they sent him in the TV room, they shut the door, and then when it's time to come out, they knocked, they let him back out. Well, my cousin went in there, and I'm telling the dude, man, you shouldn't have sent him in there. Now I'm hearing boom, 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 shit falling, people falling, all this shit. About a couple of minutes later, my, my cousin comes out the door, and all the dudes are laying on the floor, and I told the dude that was running shit, I said, I told you, man, I'm not here to shoot hot up air up your ass, because I don't shoot hot air up air in anybody's ass. You know, like I ran into a gentleman yesterday and said, he said that he did an interview, and then he kind of went by the stuff that I had said because of the fact that he really didn't know me, but when he did his homework, he had found out, okay, this is what's up with Johnny. You fuck with him, he'll make you disappear. That was just the way it was. I didn't meet around the bushes with nobody. It was like, I didn't want to go snatch anybody up from their house. So I used to think 
of a better way, you know, like this girl, like my homie. Hey, take her over here to Downey to the, to the arcade place. And when you guys come out, I'll fucking put some bullets in this bitch. You know what I mean? Just on GP, you know, because a lot of them were in my hood and they were slinging dope and they were making big money, Mark, big money. I'm talking about stacks of paper, man. And I had this one homie that he was cooking juice in the spark spark plug job, um, bottles, the whole thing. Now, the price I couldn't even give you because one of those black vials, the fat, the fat small ones, those are $500 that you pay for that. Not alone the cigarettes, the rolling papers, because you can't just dip a cigarette, bring it out, and smoke it. Reason, because it's real flammable. It'll blow up in your face. Many times I dipped one, forgot to get another cigarette and use that as, as a starter, but my homies, a couple times didn't use it as a starter and one of them had their whole finger right here just peeled off how it peeled off i'm thinking some type of acid or grease he had inside the inside the camera fro froze his fingers and they look like frostbite they look if you can bend them that they would snap and he was constantly in pain you know so he tells me hey johnny these fucking dudes shot my arm man i see them i can't get busy with them one-on-one -on -one. you know what's up will you do me the favor i said yeah no problem so we took a little cruise we cruised up all through everybody's hood finally behold we caught this little fucking dude walking down the street now i know more or less what kind of attire my homies wear and and what kind of attire they wear? They wear just for the simple colors. They but we both wear green, but on their shirt they have three palm trees that represented Les Tres Palmas. That's what it represented. Now, I might know my dad was at war with him because my dad used to tell me stories about these guys. He meant used to mention their last name and then he used to say. I'm gonna go over there, get a boy, I'm gonna go fuck this dude up and we'll go. I'll be in my car eating while my dad's whooping somebody's ass. And he's not just whooping one motherfucker's ass, he's whooping the dude, the dude that was with him, the guy that was over here with him. He, he'd whoop on everybody, you know what I mean? And, and I tripped out because I never screamed, I never got scared. I never, uh, uh, whenever I seen somebody get stabbed or somebody get shot, it doesn't really, it doesn't really uh, uh, excite me. And I was wondering why was that? You know what I mean? Was I destined to go to war or, or fight a big battle? Because every battle that I'm in, that I have dreams of, I'm on the front line. And yeah, I got a few of my cousins, a few of my homies, but I also got a few of my other homies that are down the way. And this line, I know that was so long, but you can see everybody's face. You can talk to them and everything. And I also remember that there was this bright light that sat up on top. I wanted to look at it, but something inside my head said, don't look upon that. Don't even try and peek at it. I think, to tell you the truth, that there was corpses inside there. That's what I was thinking because I'm thinking just a week ago, you opened up the trunk and you had all kinds of candy and goodies and, and hard liquor and everything. And we took as much as we could. And you only want, he only wanted $20 for all that. So we gave him the $20. Not 10 minutes later, he comes back, and my cousin had bought a big old boom box, the kind they used to sell, like, like they're like this big. You know, they got a handle, they got all the buttons. I remember I was sitting in the room, and I see somebody pick it up, but at that time I didn't know he was around. If I would have knew he was around, he wouldn't have picked up shit. He wouldn't have been allowed inside, inside the driveway. You know what I mean? And he used to come, hey man, go to the homie's pad and pick this up for me. And I would tell him, the homie's not going to give it to me because he knows darn well that I don't use you know what I mean? Those type of things, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just not me. So they used to get on me, oh yeah, homie, they used to get on us and say, oh, you guys ain't doing shit. You guys ain't putting no work. These fools are coming, shooting the older homies. And I was like, wait up, pump your brakes. You're telling me that they're shooting the older homies, but yet you want me to, you want me to step up and put in the business. These guys ain't did nothing to me. You know what I mean? Maybe my homie got in shit with one of them, and then all war breaks loose. And I'm thinking, it's school all these dudes are all my friends all my homies and they're disrespecting my hood and i'm wondering why in the fuck they disrespecting my hood well when they were doing that my homie took us to his locker and he pulled out it must have been a nine inch blade and he told me look carry this and you'll get out of hand 
booked their ass. I'm like, all right, me being a naive motherfucker that I am again, I take the knife with me. And we're going down the street, we see these fucking dudes in a mini truck, and they're throwing their gang signs, we're looking at them, they're looking at us. And I tell my homie, get on these motherfuckers. He gets on them, we hit the freeway. Now the dude that we hit the freeway with, he's in one of the 5.0s. The new ones that came out, the newest one that came out was like, like 89, 88. It was a rock, a rock, yeah, uh, a rock C. I think it was rock, C. yeah, something like that. Well, that car right there was really, really fast. And I told him, hey man, let me use your car, cruise around and find these motherfuckers, and then I'll come back and get you. We'll go over there. We'll handle business. He was more like, nah, I ain't gonna lend my car out. I don't want to lend my car out. Last time I landed out, this and this happened, and I would tell him, but that's not my fault. If the guy doesn't bring back your stuff that you give to him, well, shame on him. When we catch him, we whoop his ass, give him a throw. I ask whooping and take everything he owns. You know, when I speak about that, if something pops into my head about Skid Row, you know, what I've noticed about Skid Row is you cannot leave anything next to you without tying it to your wrist or tying it to your foot or to your belt buckle. So when someone pulls it, they're going to pull your whole body and you're going to wake up. You know, that happened to me like three separate occasions. The fourth thing that happened was I was kicking it and I was rolling through uh, Huntington Park and this lady walks up to me. I see Mark that she's pretty tweaked out. I see that she's been around. She knows what time it is. And her old man, he didn't really even give a fuck about her. She would need to go do her do and he would just kick back and wait for her to come back so he could spend, you know, her money. Well, a lot of my homegirls at that time had gone into Kukui dust. The way they were making kukui dust was they got two jars of pepper, a pickle jar, empty it out, and they'll throw all, all the stuff in there. Then they'll add the other shit, and then they'll hook it up, and it, it would get real hard, real hard. Not like a rock, a little bit harder. But it wasn't the, the color of rock. It was like a purple, like an off-white. And I was wondering, you know, what the fuck are they putting inside here that's making... The, the color of it changed. I knew it wasn't me because of the fact that I was in day out, day out, in and out, in and out. I had no time to sit there and lollygag with anybody besides my grandmother. The only reason I disguised it was her, with her was because number one, my grandmother never ever repeated what she had heard. Regardless of who it was, she never admitted that I was out there gangbanging, hurting people, you know what I mean, uh, not just them, but hurting their lives. I didn't realize this at first until, you know, one of my homies got killed and he was one of my good homies and I felt bad. I was shedding tears and the same question came to me. Hey, why do you, what are you crying for? And I would explain to him what had happened, that we went to a Winchell's, we were over there kicking it, some dude walked in, he started talking talking shit with my uncle, they took it outside. My uncle went out there, another dude went out there, and by the time I got out there, my uncle and my, and, and my, and my cousin, and my, my uncle and my, my other uncle were slurched over a wall. They had stabbed them and they put them on top of a wall and they left them right there. Nobody knew they were there because it was in the back until, I think it was like on a Friday, and they weren't coming back till Monday. So he sat in there all Monday, and I'm telling my homies, let's cut him down, let's cut him down, you know, because he's, he's fucking hanging, and oh, no, just leave him up there, you know, he's like a decoration, I'm like, you're, cold, you're a cold man, a decoration, it's the man's life we're talking about, you know what I mean, and they didn't really care, you know, and these days, we're like with fentanyl, you know, um, before with heroin, if I had heroin, Mark, and you were sick, I would get you well just on GP, but nowadays, I know these dudes have fentanyl. They ain't trying to share with no one. They ain't trying to share with me, you, anybody in general. Then they walk by and they're talking shit. Oh, I got Chris. I got black. You know what I mean? I got this. I got that. One of my little homies, he's balling right now. He has a gang of guns, a gang of cars. You know what I mean? But he did it the smart way. What he did was he didn't fuck with nobody. He didn't give nobody money. He didn't do no business with anybody. He didn't give nobody no fronts. And that's why he's up in the top right now living in the loft. Now he came at me with a proposition and said, hey, come work for me. I told him I would, but there's two things wrong about that. The first one is the fucking scooter that you got to get, get away on is not like the scooter you see today. It's a big one. These are real small, really, really small. And you can hear them coming from a mile away. They're really fast. You know what I mean? And my homie used to come down on his motorcycle and I used to tell him, hey, let me check it out. And he never, ever wanted me to use it. 
Never. Because he knew in the back of my mind, I was going to cruise up, cruise right by him, leave it on, let him have it, jump back on the bike, and we're gone. You know what I mean? Those were, those were the type of plans that my homies were giving me, so I was using them as I went along. You know, another time they come to my house and they're looking for my uncle and he's under the bed. They're turning all the beds over, all the beds over until I tell my wife and my cousin, hey, lay on that bed. We say you guys are pregnant and he won't fuck, they won't fuck with you. So, you know what I mean? They did that. They went and lay in bed, they didn't fuck with them. But half an hour, 45 minutes before that, they would go in a mini truck and hide in the back and they would call these fools up to the truck and you know us being men if you see beautiful women in a car and they call you nine times out of ten you're going there just luckily that when I was going the bitch accidentally rolled out her window a little bit and I see my shoes and I confronted you know I, I confronted them you know hey you know uh, the reason I had lost my shoe because I had smoked some juice and it was real real good juice and I always had heard that PCP makes you take your clothes off and I didn't believe that shit until I woke up the next day I had fucking some other shoes on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and I was like this is not what I came with what I came with was my black Levi's the big ones, my black sweatshirt, and my black Nikes. I don't know if I was asleep, and they took them when I was asleep, but that's like the number one thing here in Skid Row. Everybody wants to touch everybody else's shit. One of my homies that I was dealing with, he just barely got out. I explained to him about this and everything. He said he's going to come. He's a real good dude. He has a lot of stories. I mean, he has a lot of stories, and they're all true. Mainly the things you hear from me or one of my homies, it's mainly true. It's true because of the fact that our fathers were homeboys, and they did the same thing. So it wasn't too hard for us to figure out how to go about not even getting busted because my uncle and my dad, their thing was they would tell me, oh, we don't ever get busted. We don't ever get busted. Only fools get busted. And I was like, how is that possible? You guys are out here gangbanging, hurting people, stabbing people. Back then, they used to bumper jack motherfuckers. You know what a bumper jack is? It's that big ass square pipe. You stick the bar in and you jack your car up. They used to hit guys with that. I remember they hitting this dude so many times that the dude wasn't even moving, groaning, trying to block his face, nothing. And they beat this dude so fucking bad that sometimes it gives me chills on my body because I don't see if I could ever succumb to that. I don't ever I could see if I could succumb to actually hurting someone and then leaving them for dead. If I think if I hurt him, I think I'll call 911 and give him the information where, where he's at. Because a lot of dudes run around here, Mark, like they got a big old gun. And when it comes down to it, they ain't got shit. I had a motherfucker saying he was going to smoke me. And when I caught this little fucker, I searched his pants, searched his waist and everything. He didn't have shit. I made him take his socks off. He didn't have nothing, no gun, no, he, or you say he didn't have no residue from the firearm. But the only way you can get that stuff off is if you wear wrist high gloves and they don't break. You know, right now I'm getting into tattooing. I want to tattoo and put some work on the phallus that are here so everybody could see what real work is because I see a lot of work and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of guys out here that tattoo and they're not very bad, but they're not very good as well. You know what I mean? Either some are mediocre, unless I gotta get the mediocre when I gotta mix it with, you know, maybe some sugar, some candy, and I'll hook it up. You know what I mean? The whole thing, the whole thing, Mark, what I was getting at right now was when I stopped gangbanging for a while, I wanted to go into business on selling something else instead of drugs. I tried the G rides, the cars, but what it was with the cars is that. We had to get rid of them when we would take them down to the riverbed and light them on fire due to the fact that when we had a car for so long, the other gang would recognize who we were and before we got to the block, they were lighting us up. And my homie, my homies even did it in a clown suit at a birthday party. He went in a clown, a clown suit, all dressed up, playing the part, all the whistles, you know, everything he, could, he had on him, you know, me smoke bombs and everything, and I'm thinking, this dude's legit, you know what I mean? He's a real, he's a real fucking, you know, uh, magician or whatever he's doing. Well, it wasn't that. 
what he was doing was he was getting under the car and he was releasing something down there. And so when the car started and you took off, it, it wasn't going to stop. I don't know if he cut the brake line or anything he did, but one of my homies was driving with his old lady and they were arguing and he turned to the next lane, went to put the brake so he could slow down to go off the off ramp and it never stopped. It went right off the the edge of the freeway and landed on top of somebody's house. Luckily, he didn't kill nobody, but the reason he did it was because, how could I put it? He was a sucker for a hoe. It's my aunt, but he was a sucker for a hoe. Every time she got into a situation, he'd be right there. And my uncle, he was like 6'2". He was a really, really big man. His, his wife must have been like 5'8", 5'9", if that. You know what I mean? And that was my Uncle Sabu. He was married to my Aunt Stella. He used to style a lot of dope. He was like the main connection there. And us being young, we already knew who was coming. If somebody got off their car, we'd relay the message, hey, so-and-so's here, so-and-so's here. My uncle would get it. And whatever my uncle was going to do to this fool, we were going to watch. But nine times out of ten, he would just give dude more dope. And I told my uncle, why would you give this guy so much dope? And he's saying he loses it every time. A person doesn't lose their dope every fucking day. You know what I mean? He's trying to say he loses it so my grandmother will say, Oh, I'm sorry for your meals. Here you go and break them off a couple of hundred. He didn't earn his shit. He didn't go out there for a nine to five and get a check stub at the end of the week. Nah, they got paid in the end of the week, but there was no check stub. And that caught my attention because I said, Wow, if they could come in here and just write a check and sign it and just pass it through, well, I want to try it. I was going to try it, and about two days before I tried it, a girl went in there. She tried to do it for, I think, 20 grand. And what they did was they said, oh, here's your receipt. Wait right here. We got to go to the back and talk to the manager. Well, they weren't going to talk to no manager. They were going back to the, use the phone to say that this broad was extorting them. And I used to be always careful because in my hood, you can only have so many points and then they validate you. And you go to validation for the rest of your life that you're in prison. Me, I don't promise to ever go back. But due to the fact that I got in trouble a lot and I was getting in trouble a lot more, it kind of became destiny. You know what I mean? It was going to happen. It was My uncles used to school me and tell me, look, this is how you do it when you're in there. This is how you do it. And I would look at him like, why the fuck are you telling me this? What am I doing? What do you mean am I supposed to be doing? He said, oh yeah, you, when you do a drive by, you get it, you lock it like this, you lock it like that, you cock it here, you aim it, and you fire. And I always go back to the first time I ever fired on somebody. I don't know if I hit somebody, I heard somebody scream, but I mean, once you shoot, the adrenaline in your body just shoots you out fast as fuck. I ran home so fucking fast. And the fucked up part about about it was if I'm standing in front of my yard and I'm looking down the street, I could see these dudes and these homies posted on the street that belonged to us. So what I did was when my little homies got out, I told them, look, go over here to my spot. Tell my girl you want this and you want that and she'll give it to you. You guys go handle your business. You know what I mean? Because the simple fact that I'm kind of tired of these dudes coming around here acting like I owe them. Like, whatever you give me, you should give them. And I told him it's not like that. You know what I mean? You got to work for it. You know what I mean? And I used to be out there working for mine when I was a youngster. When I was a youngster, Mark, I had not a care in the world. I didn't give a fuck about a dude's mom. I didn't give a fuck about his grandmother. If I caught him slipping with his ass, well, then I'll try to pull him away and beat his ass. But a lot of times, I'm um, beating one of the dude's asses and somebody grabs my hair and fucking pulls it back and I turn on to punch him and it's a lady. I'm like, fuck, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? You know what I mean? She's over here fucking pushing me, don't even know me. She don't even know if I'm gonna shoot around and fucking shoot her ass. You know what I mean? She don't even know that, but like I was saying, they had so much balls back in the day that it was nothing like it is today. Today it's totally different. You know what I mean? You see guys out there that I know for a fact I had I had took part in locking this dude up, but he, he's yelling my name. When I get to the hole, it's quiet. All the killers are in there, and this dude's yelling my fucking name. Oh, you burned me, you did this, and I'm like, man, those are some serious fucking words, you know what I mean? Now my homie's all upset, hope is his trunk, finds the juice. Now I tell him, now it's time to whoop homie's ass for the simple fact that he lied on me. So I'd end up whooping his fucking ass. We'll get back in the car and he'd be like, where you want to go? And I always used to tell him, take me to Winter Boulevard. 
because back then we didn't Boulevard didn't have checkpoints. You can go up, back, up, back, up, back, but you couldn't leave and come back. You know, they used to stomp your hand and you jam in the car. And I used to, they used to stamp my hand. I'd go get another car and drive that one in there because at that time they were giving us twenty-five thousand for a truck and I think thirty-five thousand for a car. You know what I mean? And if I would have known this, Mark, if I would have known this from Jump, I would have went and got it to do myself and told him, look, I'm the one getting the product, not anybody else. These dudes are just taking the product. They're just taking advantage of it because they're going to talk, you, you know, the guy into giving it up or doing one just like that. You know what I mean? And I used to be upset because, you know, in my hood, we used to wear certain colors. We used to have green belts, green hats, sometimes even green Levi's. You know what I mean? But with black shoes. And we used to go, and I remember one time we went to school and we were in there, and we must have been like 20 of us. Well, we're in the front and we're smoking because you can smoke outside in the front. And I see one car pass by and the dude's breaking his neck, and I'm like, nah, I might just be imagining things. It might just be the motherfucking drugs I'm doing. Well, we're kicking back again, we're drinking a beer, and lo and behold, here comes that car again. And I told my uncle, I said, hey, this is the third fucking time this car has came by. Get your shit, I'm going to get my shit. When they come by again, we're going to light them up. Well, what happened was, Mark, is that the people were coming and they made a, a left turn. And they got caught in the crossfire. In the crossfire, it caught them. My uncle was the longest one that had caught him. It caught him back here. But all these other dudes were just laid up. They had like a, a, you know, they had some really nice cars that they used to come with. They were really young. I don't know where they got the cars from, but they were really nice cars. And I knew they weren't stolen because, like I had stated before, I was the type of individual that I would yell at my enemies' girlfriends. Because once I sleep with them and get their information, well, then I knew all where, all, where all her homeboys kicked it. And I used to go over there, me and my homies, and we'll take turns. I'd be, I'd do my D, put it away, go to come back and pass the homies. And the homies, I'm like, where are you going? We're going to fucking old boy spot to light them up. And I'm like, I already been there. They're like, we don't care. We want them again. So they would get them, beat the shit out of them. So dude would get beat several times. My, but my whole thing was, if I would have asked them, hey, dog, um, you know, uh, are you doing all right? Most of them would be like, well, I'm doing a little bit, you know what I mean? And I said, well, let's go inside. Then we'd go inside his house and he'd have dope right here, dope right here, dope right here, all three different kinds. And I'm saying, damn, you're just giving me $75 worth of that? In my mind, I'm saying I'm glad I didn't help him on his last jam when he owed $50,000. He owed $50,000 to somebody, and they were on his ass. He came to me to my spot, and he was like, hey, Johnny, can you help me out, bro? You know what I mean? Um, these dudes are trying to get me. You know what I mean? I don't know who they are. I told him I know exactly who they are. They're the motherfucking cartel. That's who wants to fucking get you. You're fucking with their dope. I told him I told you from jump. If you're going to get a job and you're going to work for these motherfuckers, you got to work consistently because one day you fuck up, you're, irre you're, you're replaceable. I was going to say irreplaceable, but you're replaceable. They'll switch your ass up so quick, your head will spin. And then once they kick you out, you know, where are you going to go? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going to go to Peaceful where my cousins are at, where they're kicking in and they're doing their thing. I'm not going to go over there because they're liable to shoot me down. You know what I mean? They're, they're treacherous. They're not a big gang, but they're really, really treacherous. You know, they bring out a lot of real motherfuckers in their hood. You know what I mean? Not these fake-ass fools you see come through here and tell you a story and it's all bullshit. Because I've listened to several guys that I know on that channel and they're talking strictly about nothing. You know what I mean? They got you asking the questions. Like I told my homie the other day, he said, well, when I go, um, is, that, is that guy Mark going to ask me questions? Is he going to ask me, you know what? I go, Mark, don't ask nothing. You're speaking about your life. If it's the truth, then you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't, you ain't been tried and convicted of it. I said, I got convicted of two counts of kidnap, and I could speak about them freely today because of the fact that it will be double jeopardy.
You know, man, when I really look into it, I think that they got over on me when I did my last video. Because I did my last video and say he pays you $500 a video. Well, he gives you $600 just for yourself. And I would explain to him all the time, you know, like I would tell him, it's not just me. I got my girlfriend there, you know what I mean? I got my cousin living there and you're breaking every window. Well, this dude was breaking my window so much that I laid in the cup for his ass. I went and stashed in a bush. It was like 4, 30, 5 in the morning and I see three dudes walking up and sure enough, one has one of those big ass red blocks in his hand. Before he's about to throw it, I shoot. Boom! I don't know how I did it, but it must have hit the fucking brick because it didn't hit his hand. It hit the brick. The brick exploded, went flying. He was all pissed off. You know what I mean? But that's the way my uncles used to do their things. Now, these were my uncles. Now, remember, my uncles all had brothers. These are all my cousins. I think my youngest cousin is doing 18 years right now. He stabbed a dude when the dude was asleep. Why he did that, I don't know. I, I, I tried to ask him last time on the phone, like, why did you shoot this dude when he only owed you, you know, uh, uh, 15 bucks? I told him that ain't, that ain't that serious. But I also have to take into consideration that, mind you, you can do it right now, and you won't have to worry about it till like 6 in the evening. With heroin, you do it right now, and about 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you already want lunch. You know what I mean? That, that's what I've been, I've been observing, I've been reading up on, because I wanted to know where your, where your channel had came from. You know what I mean? I listened to your interview, I listened to another, a lot of other people's interviews, and I don't like to be the one that says, um, um this, um that, because when you do that, it feels to me like you're thinking about what you're about to say. And if it's the truth, well then, it's the truth. Nobody can change it. Not even I. You know what I mean? It, this is the truth I gave her. And now I'm trying to tell a lie. She catches me in a lie. Now she's talking shit. Now I'm walking down the street on Broadway. And an old man walks up to me. And he's only about, about this big. And he's like, hey, man. I heard you were talking about my girl, man. Saying she was a whore, man. And she sold her ass and all this. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, she told me that, she, that you said she was just using you and that, 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 that the little birds, you know, she, that she was just using you, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, I don't, get, I don't mind being used and abused, but when you're misused, that's a whole different ball game. And I used to see a lot of my homies getting misused by other people, you know what I mean? By other people, I'm talking about white people, black people, because they used to know that that corner house, you can go there and either somebody's gonna score you PCP, uh, angel dust, weed, or straight cocaine. And my uncle knew how to rock up the cocaine. He used to get it, put two ounces in a jar, put some fucking, uh, put some mint leaves in there, put about $100 pour worth of juice, mix it all around and stick it in the freezer. When they first stuck it in the freezer, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? You're, you're fucking parking in the freezer. It's going to fucking be free. Freeze. He said, well, that's the best way they do it. You know, you sit in there. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 he said, he said, like, how could I put it? How could I put it? I, I, I've been trying to work on my English so that it would be proper because I'm noticing now that I'm getting older. I would speak about something, but I use a lot of slang. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get the proper etiquette for English and the proper etiquette for Spanish. And between both of them, English is much, much harder than Spanish. You know what I mean? But you like to get some of those guys because some of those guys from Mexico have been through a lot of shit. I mean, they cross the river with a fucking plastic bag in their mouth and swim the river so that way when they got in the other side they can get some fresh clothes and get dressed up in some new attire you know what i mean and i thought that was kind of appealing to me i was like man i could go over here do the deed run five blocks get up on top of that water tower and they would never see me well one time i was going to do that and i'm just about to step out and i hear a footstep boom so i step back there's like seven fucking cops walking by looking intense looking everywhere man and me the type of person i am is if they're gonna get me i just close my eyes like you know to be invisible like they won't see me you know what i mean and i'm like so i used to try to i used to try to blend into crowds but what's so so fucked up mark is that i can try to wear any type of material any type of clothes but i still get zeroed out now i've been trying to figure it out lately lately is it my style is it my aura 
You know, it's no, it's not fear because I don't really pump fear into nobody. So it has to be one or the other. So the other day when I was asking for advice, they were like, yeah, you can put up $200 or you could put up $400 and you'll get a big old blah, we'll make your money back. I go, yeah, but see, this is what you don't understand. If I was to get something, it wouldn't, I couldn't give her nothing because everything I'm getting, I'm trying to fix where we live. You know what I mean? And it's it's really, really hard because, you know, you're living there, you're kicking it, and all of a sudden there's a knock at the door and there's like five of my homies at the front door. The lady lives right upstairs. So then she started complaining about who are all those guys you're bringing over? And I tell her, they're all my cousins. I got six aunts, seven uncles, and they all got children. And they're all from my hood. They're all from my hood. You know what I mean? Every single last one of them except two. You mean, and, and those were the two that they didn't sleep on the floor. You know what I mean? I used to tell them, sleep on the floor, somebody's gonna come by and shoot and shoot you. Nah, not in my, home, in my own home, fuck that, they ain't gonna scare me. I said, they're not there to scare you, they're there to hurt you, they're there to, to, to relay a message for our uncle through you, because they tried it for me already and I shot them down. I'm not shooting nothing to nobody for you or anybody else, because my life is always at jeopardy every time I pick up. I'm a third striker, so I always have to remember inside. I'm a third striker, and I fuck up, and I'm gone. They're going to take me, lock me up, put me away forever. You know, just recently I was telling you about that guy that's caught up in me, myself, that guy Casper that's caught up in me. You know, I've been working on him a lot, but he's so, so powerful. What I mean by that is if I get sick and it's the only thing there, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to get high on it for the simple fact that that's the way the drug makes you. You know, it doesn't get you on the, f it doesn't get you on the floor looking for rocks. No, it doesn't do that. Anything you find, like a piece of pistachio or anything, they stick it in the pipe and it starts popping, pa pa pa, popping everywhere. Done fucked up the pipes, but over here down the street, you can buy 12 pookies for $10. You know, that's a hell of a deal, you know, I bought, uh, we got those two days ago because every time someone goes through the spot and wants to buy some dope, they're like, hey, let me buy some dope, and then the next thing is, hey, you got a spoon? And I'm like, why do you come up prepared when you know where you're coming? Oh, there, there might not be, what do you mean there might not be nothing? That guy's here every day, man. You know what I mean? People are there every day. You know what I mean? And dudes you just want to make excuses. Excuses after excuses after excuses. You know what I mean? I had like three homies that were dealing dope, and each one of them got shot because of the fact that they were pulling the wool over the next person's eyes instead of being in front with them and telling them, hey, look, I got 30000 I'm going to give you 10000 and see what you can do with it. People think that's a lot of money. You and I know, Mark, that $10,000 $10, is not a lot of money. You know, we blow that shit in a year like five, ten times. I know I do. You know what I mean? Because I be buying some nice stuff. You know what I mean? I bought some things yesterday that are antique. They're so fucking nice. You know what I mean? And I don't know what it is, Mark, how I come along and find them or people give them to me. It's just like they say here and I see it and I'm like, what the fuck? Does this person even know what they're giving me? And me, that I'm, a type, I'm the type of person I'm honest. I show them, you know what I mean? Look, this is who makes it. This is the type of bear it is. It's not cheap. You know what I mean? And what they used to do is they used to just open up the seams on the side, take out some of that shit that, you know, the, uh, the gauze or whatever it is, the, the cotton and the stuff, the gun inside, the stuff, the white weapons inside. And we'd be cruising, we'd get pulled over, and never once did the fucking cop ever grab the doll. If he would have grabbed the doll, he would have noticed the difference right away, but he never grabbed it. So what happened was he was talking shit about me, saying that I came over here just for certain things and all this bullshit. And all along, all he was doing was coming over here, getting money, and then straight to the connect. Straight to the connect. I'll be like, hey, you want to go with me? No, I got somewhere to go. Where you got to go? We can't mind. So in my head, I'll say, damn, I don't want to get to that point where I, 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 uh, I get to a point where if something goes wrong, I just hurt somebody right away. I try to put that guy away. I try to put that bad, bad person so far back. But yet my uncles and all my cousins, when I see them, you know, they don't call me Johnny, they call me by Casper, my, my nickname. They call me by that, and when they call me that, I tell them, because my grandmother's listening, you know what I mean? And I don't want my grandmother to know all my business. Not at this time, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't care keeping it within myself. But once my grandmother got at me and asked me, hey, what was wrong? I thoroughly explained it to her, expecting an ass whooping, 
But instead, instead, she fixed the whole thing and she said, hey, you need to stay jumping on those beds or jumping out that window because me and my little brother, as soon as my grandmother went to sleep, oh, we tiptoed out of her room because she used to have a sleep right next to her. But we used to have to wait till like, ooh, two, three in the morning just to get out and go have fun. So all the day would be gone. We're on house arrest all day, but when six o'clock came and the evening started, we're gone because she can't call no more probation officers. She can't call no law officers to come and get me because once I see the law, I'm gone. You know what I mean? They ain't gonna catch me. You know, and lately I've been coming, lately I've been coming across a lot of guys that have been asking me, hey, can I go do a video? And I tell them straight out, Mark, you have to speak to Mark first and tell him about your life. And then he decides if he wants to hear it or not. I said, because you can imagine how many hears he hears a day. I said, when I go, I try to take something different every time. That way I can keep him listening, keep him on the edge of the seat and just listening intently. That's my thing. I want somebody to be at the edge of the seat like, fuck, that really happened? Yeah, that really happened. You know what I mean? Oh, that didn't happen. That's bullshit. And about 10 minutes later, the same thing happened again. You know what I mean? And then these fools would feel like idiots. I mean, there's been times, Mark, right now where I was sharing with you that I'm getting gang stalked. You know what I mean? And I never knew what a gang stalker was until I came face to face with these motherfuckers. Now these fools look gang member, straight gang member, but yet they're against gang members. They're against them all the way, you know what I mean? And they shoot, they already killed two of my homies. These dudes from Norwalk, um, what is it? Norwalk, uh, uh, Norwalk, Norwalk Tweakers, I think they call them. And these dudes are up all night searching for people to get caught slipping and the reason they're catching people is because remember they're up all night we're not we're asleep so once we get up and we hear the gunfire we get our things we run out there and shoot whoever it is but they're long gone so I said well you know what since they're coming right here and they have to turn up that hill up on the up on the top of the hill lives droopy and Gato, they live on the top of the hill. If they feel a shooting down here, all they gotta do is come outside and light up the car that goes by. But they're so, so greedy. Today they're so greedy, they're so naive. They act like everything belongs to them, everything. You know, my homies think everything they get, if we're hitting something and there's a lot of good shit, I'll grab something and I'll put it over here and then my homie will grab it and put it back where his shit's at. And I would tell me, what the fuck are you doing, dog? It took me a while to get, a while to get this fucking wires off. Now I want to, because I'm taking fridge and everything. Fridge, I'm taking microwave, I'm taking the fucking, the freezer. I'm taking it all for the simple fact that, you know, uh, when I went to go, take something from somebody's house, I wanted to leave a butthole bare. I don't even want them to have toilet paper. You know what I mean? And the smartest thing I ever did was, I rented a U-Haul truck, backed it in, and just loaded everything up. I think two people, the neighbors came by, hey, uh, where's so-and-so going? He would say, oh, they're going on vacation, they'll be gone for a while. And they were like, oh, I have something to tell her about. She's gone, she ain't coming back for a while, you know what I mean? And when my grandmother goes to Mexico, you know, she knows so many people up there that she would bring us back cartons of cigarettes. Now, they tasted nasty, but they were still written Marlboro on top of them. You know what I mean? She used to bring that. She used to bring BB guns for us. She used to bring some different kind of Mexican candies, all kinds of cookies, all kinds of shit. While I was, a, you know, well, she used to just buy them for everyone, but she used to have to put a lock on the refrigerator. They had a righteous lock on our refrigerator, the one in the front and the one in the back. And we wanted to eat, we had to have my grandmother come and unlock the shit with the key so we could eat. That's where I found out that, that, that my cousin, the one that she, uh, she used to take care of that wasn't too smart, that she was kind of off because she was my cousin. And she was trying to get at me, and I was telling her, hey, you're my fucking cousin. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know what I mean? Why would you want to get at me and want to sleep with me when you're my blood? You know what I mean? And I don't care. When I was in place, man, I used to do the same thing. I had a boyfriend in there, and I used to be with him. And I said, well, that's why you never, ever uh, finish that program. Because a lot of times when we're out here and say they want to give us a program, they'll put us right down the street to that big-ass fucking building right there. 
where all the parolees and everything live and put you in there. And I went in there voluntarily. So I can leave any time I want. That's what I thought. Nah, they would keep me there till 1, 1 30. And then the next one, oh, there's another cin cin uh, cinema co coming up. You know, someone's going to do one. And I'm not saying I'm any better than the ones they do. But to me, Mark, theirs are boring. They're fucking, it's boring. They're talking about the same thing over and over and over about how many people they shot, how many people they ran over with the bus, you know, how many cars have they stolen, you know, how many bikes have they took. You know, just recently, I was on Maple about three days ago and I had a really, really nice bike. And I fell asleep with my arm tucked inside the spokes. Can you believe that they took my arm out and then rolled my bike off? But when they rolled my bike off, I already had known there was there was something wrong because homie that does business with him kept on getting upset and kept on telling me nothing was happening. Then I would come you know, over here to you and say, hey, what's up? And oh, yeah, it's happening. And I'm like, what is it? Are they jealous? Why are they jealous when they have the safe arm opportunity to speak to Mark like I do? The only difference I notice is when you do interviews with other people, you're throwing in their question at the question, you know what I mean? And I'm like, you know what, what, why is it so hard for them to explain a story that is true? You know what I mean? That is, that is honestly true. Like when they get up here and say, I don't speak about nobody, no names, no organizations, nobody in particular. But when I speak about my cousins, I go through my cousins. And the next cousin I talk about is, is my cousin they call Sabu. I think I spoke, I spoke about, that, about that one, Sabu. My next cousin after him is my cousin Negro. Now, he's the type of individual that... He used to be with a lot of women. I'm talking multiples of women. I'm talking about the phone to ring off the hook for him. My grandmother would get mad. He'd come home different with a different woman every night, every night. And I'd be like, man, where in the fuck does he get these women? So I had to ask him, you know, hey, I talked to the homie Rim. Now I'm going to ask you, what is your guys' secret? How do you guys get to talk to so many women, take them out, end up marrying them? What are you telling them? And they told me, lies. They're telling, we're telling them lies. You know, I go, what do you mean, what kind of lies? He said, well, we're telling them lies. We're telling them we got money. This is our truck. You know, this is our stuff. We live here. You know, and they would totally lie. And then when the time would come and the lady would come out the house, and get the fuck, get off my property. Now my homies would feel like shit. Now the broads know they're lying, so who gets them next? Me and my little homies, because they're like, oh, fuck these older dudes. These younger dudes got more shit going on. So, and we did. We did have more shit going on. I mean, we slinked everything, Mark. There's not one drug that I haven't sold, except like cannabinol or reds or you know, whites. I even sold whites. I was in junior high selling whites. You know what I mean? I was in, I was in junior high selling whites. I was in, in, in uh, high school selling weed and marijuana. And I had the best, no, I'm sorry, coke and marijuana. I had the best coke anywhere. The kind of shit you would barely touch your tongue and your whole fucking mouth would get numb. And my connection was some 15-year-old bison. His dad was the connection, but I used to kick it with him every day. One time he took me to, into his dad's room, and we went inside there, and the whole closet was just filled with nothing but weed and cocaine. And he grabs a fucking bag of weed. He scoops it in there and puts it in a baggie. He grabs the weed, scoops it in there, puts it in another baggie. We jam. Boom, we jam. Now we're in the hood, and we're slinging left and right. And there goes the homies getting, getting jealous. Hey, what do I get? What do I get? See, at that time, I didn't use heroin. So I didn't know how bad it really was. I didn't know that it had made you so sick where you didn't want to eat. Right now, I got a lunch, and I ate, and it was all right. But due to the fact that my body's lacking what I've been giving it, you get a lot of pain. I'm saying, if I was to stop right now and tell you, hey, Mark, I'm going to stop, I'm done, I ain't using drugs no more. I say within three days, I'd be in the hospital. Either with my liver going bad, my kidneys going bad, something would be wrong with me. That's what I noticed. With these drugs, I think the last time I've had a cold mark was like, shit, oh, four years ago, man. I haven't been sick for four years at all. And I try to read it up. I'm trying to read up on, 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 on the fentanyl. Like, what does it do to a person? You know, fentanyl has long periods of time 
that things happen. Like, you know, uh, you catch something, it doesn't heal for that shit for the longest. Now, before I heard that's because people had AIDS or people had HIV that, that they used to get scams on their skin and that's how it started. I ran into white boys and white girls, they got their whole face just picked out, picked out bad, you know, and they're still right there talking about, hey, is there anything in there? And all it is is blood, but they're telling me, no, that's a bug. So they would dig and dig and dig. My homie dug all the way almost to the bones of his leg. His skin, he took it off little by little by little. And what it was, it was all dead skin. But he would pull out the other skin too, do it over and over. It took like about a month and a half when I seen him wearing shorts. And I was like, hey, what happened to that stuff you had? I don't know if it's called MRSA or some type of aller allergy, um, aller allergy eating bacteria. You know what I mean? It ain't bacteria and allergy, you know what I mean? But I remember one Christmas, my grandmother went and she bought me an aquarium and there was like 30 fish in there. And I had my fish, I was a little kid, I loved my fish. But after a while, I started noticing that my fish were missing. And I'm like, what the fuck? What happened to my damn fish? Well, my uncle, what he was doing was he got his own aquarium and he was stealing my fish and taking them in his room and putting them in his fish tank. So I was like, well, how can I get even with him? What I did was I fucking punctured a hole in the side of his fucking plastic thing and it squirted all over his bed, all over the floor, and the smell didn't come out like fish for a long ass time. But like I said, I wasn't a cold man. I didn't do that just to do that because I wanted to do it. I did it because I felt it was the right thing to do. Because my uncle was the loudest, the, the, the youngest brother. And he, felt, he, he kind of felt the obligation that he was supposed to take care of me and my little brother. But I had that covered. I had that covered all the way up to the point where my little brother just lost it. He said, hey, I don't want you no more. I don't need you no more. You don't got to help me handle business no more. You know what I mean? He goes, I don't care. If you have money, I don't want no money. And my little brother, he stays with money. He's what you call a baller. Just the other day, I was singing, and some dude asked me, hey, you got any aspirin? And I was like, no, as a matter of fact, I don't, man. I don't take aspirin. He said, well, we are a damn luck. And we say, he said, he goes, well, man, fuck you. Fuck, fuck the, uh, the aspirin. Give them to me. And he fucking flicks the dollar at me. And I fucking grab it. I put it away. I tell him, next time, motherfucker, don't come around me. Ask you for something. You know what I mean? And if, and if it's there, you get all upset. You know what I mean? What's up with that? You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of guys out here that they actually feel like they got something coming. Like they're about something. And I see them pee on their fucking pants mark on a little ass fucking dude like this. You know what I mean? I could be share that stuff with you because you got all these dudes that come over that I'm watching and they're all talking a good one, yeah, this and this and this and that. Then they get in front of a camera and they freeze up. You me, I don't freeze up. I, you, my thing is, I'm telling a story that is true from the heart. None of my shit is made up. You know, and all those people that give me comments and tell me, hey, Johnny, the stuff you say, man, I catch on to it, you know what I mean? Please don't stop, you know, keep going. And I tell them, hey, it's completely up to my photographer, which you can read about him in White Underbelly. And he has a phone number. Hey, call him. Get at him. What, you want me to do your footwork for you? You want me to tell him, oh, this guy's coming and then bring you, and I don't, you don't give me shit, but yet I bring you over here. That has happened to me so many times. Besides, you know, some girls that I bring, you know, they do a good job. Some do to do a good job, but I try to explain to them and tell them, you're not in there trying to create like a movie. You're in there trying to, you know what I mean, do the right thing and give a message to these young kids out there that really need guidance. You know what I mean? I ran into 13-year-olds right here in Skid Row. 13 years old, the dude looked like a fucking little kid, and they were slapping him. There was some dudes that were just slapping them back and forth. So I stopped them. I told them, what the fuck you doing, bro? I whipped out my fucking knife. I was like, what the fuck you doing, man? All these little youngsters said this and said that. I said, man, how old are you, man? Oh, I'm 16. going to be 17. I said, 16? What the fuck are you doing down here? There's not supposed to be no room for those 16-year-olds. Just recently, I seen a lady come out of the tent with two little babies. I'm pretty sure that's against the law. I'm pretty sure you can't have your children on the streets living with you in a tent. Well, your old man's smoking dope. That ain't gonna happen. I know that, Mark, for a fact. You know what I mean? But I've also seen it. I've also went inside while I'm kicking it with them inside their fucking tent. 
in the smoky you're eating PCP and the baby is right awake and all the smoke is going through the baby and I'm like, hey dog, your, your daughter or your son's inhaling that shit. Oh, ain't nothing gonna happen. Like, well, you're fucking out your mind. Just recently a fucking cop touched it and fucking OD. Now imagine bringing it in all inside your lungs. You're gonna OD quicker than a motherfucker, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And all my uncles used one thing. My uncle Nino used weed and cocaine and heroin. My uncle, my uncle Chivo, he used heroin, but he used to jack every fucking thing we had in our house. If he brought a brand new radio, he'll get in there and he'll jack it. He'll wait till you leave it and he'll come and take it. Well, knowing that it's his, knowing that he did it. You know, and then the following day, he'd come back and he'd take some of my grandmother's coins and her jewelry. At first, they were blaming it on me, saying that I was the one taking it. I was like, fuck that. I'm going to go find this motherfucker. I'm going to put him in his place. So I'd go to the park and find him. When I found him, him and my homie were arguing. And my homie got one of those sticks with the nail on the end and just stabbed him. Ugh. You know what I mean? So he pulled it out. He ran down the street, seen some cops, went up to the cop and stabbed the cop in the side of the neck. Now, they locked everything down. They locked everything down to find this individual. And that was only a couple weeks. One time they had it locked down for a whole month. And I know they were watching because, you know what I mean, they just pull up, park, and not a soul gets out of the car. No one gets out of the car. That means they're watching. Just the other day I was at 7-Eleven way over there on uh, Olympic. And I walked all the way back. And halfway to my house, there's a hamburger stand. It serves excellent food. I forgot the name of it, Farmer John's or something, something like that. They serve some excellent, excellent food. And I went in there and I was in there eating and the door goes bing, bing. And I look up, boom, and it's those motherfuckers. They've been sitting outside for me for like a whole 45 minutes. Now, I'm unaware of what the fuck they want. Whether they're jealous, whether I did one of their homies back dirty back in the day, I'm not too sure, but everywhere I go, you know what I mean, and, 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 I, and I'm gonna wash a bed or something, I plug it in and show somebody or turn on the, the, the phone, I always have somebody criticizing. Oh man, you didn't do that. And I would tell them, let's go to my hood and ask my homies. We could bet $100 right now who did what. I said, because I'm not like you. When the shit gets thick, you guys get running. I seen that yesterday, firsthand. I couldn't believe it, and then it's not like they outnumbered us. We outnumbered them, but my homie just gave it away like nothing, like it was candy, here you go. You know what I mean? And that shit really pisses me off because I'm out here busting my ass, Mark, taking prison chances. Every fucking time I say something to somebody, I'm taking prison chances. And I constantly take them. Over and over and over, I ask myself, are you going crazy or are you just playing stupid? You know what I mean? Because I don't have nothing to show for what I did right here except the spot, my car, stuff like that. That's what I got to show. And I love it. You know what I mean? Other people come in and say, oh, man, I hated that shit, man. Fuck that shit. And I tell them the reason that was is because you don't know how to speak to a crowd of people. You don't know how to get a story across. I said, I'm getting this story across and letting the children out there know this ain't the lifestyle. It may look good on TV, it may look on gangster movies, on CSI, whatever. They may be look good on any channel, but it's totally different from what they portray. They portray one way, and it's really another way. You know what I mean? And I noticed that, because you can have a guy right here, uh, a band singing every fucking song that they know, but not one of them has one fucking tattoo. But then on the other side, you run into the homies, and they play a tune, and they play every fucking tune. You know what I mean? And I tell them, you got potential, man. You got potential. You don't got to be a gang member. How are you supposed to go get jumped in at 38 years old? What happened to those other 20? Well, lo and behold, I find out why this bitch wanted that much money, because she bought that off, dude. And because it didn't fit her a little, she stopped me right now, and she's like, hey. You got that thing? And I'm like, yeah, I got one. She's all, can you go to my house with me and take it? I'm like, for what? She's all, this fucking dude pushed my little girl out the way and I'm gonna pop a cap in his ass. And I'm like, yeah, right. You're a woman, you ain't gonna do shit. Bullshit, when we pulled up to that fucking party, she let my homie drive and her and my homie were on the shotgun seat and the passenger seat with two shotguns and let him off in broad daylight. 
broad daylight, two in the afternoon. I knew that those fools would never, never forget that shit because I went by, the school was closed, nobody was going, and I was like, damn. Then they started blaming it on me because me and my cousin look alike. Everything I do, they blame him. Everything he does, they blame me. And it's fucked up because I'm only, I'm only here, Mark, to try to help the youth understand that being a gang member ain't all what it's wrapped up to be. Several times I've told them, it looks good, it smells good, but it's not good. You know what I mean? Uh, mainly they leave you leftovers here. Never once have I seen them come to the door with a whole pizza and be like, hey, here's a piece for you, here's a piece for you. But yet, they rather nickel and dime you. You know what I mean? And whenever I come, Mark, I come because I have a bill to take care of. You know what I'm saying? And I want to get out there and push a message. I'm trying to get a message to people that is not too long so I won't lose my listener. I'm trying to get a lesson to them more. You have to watch your back out here in Skid Row. It's nothing nice. People take it for granted. You know, you got motherfuckers, you're riding your bike, and all of a sudden you hear somebody yelling, hey, that's my fucking bike. You know, I look at him, I'll tell him, check this out, man. That's the oldest fucking rule in the book, man. That's the oldest things people been doing, man. Talking about, hey, that's my bike, man. Let me get my fucking bike. And being that you're new, you're like, hey, I, I didn't know I got it from my homie. Here you go. And then I get back at my homie and say, black dude never gave me no fucking bike. And I'm like, oh, man, this motherfucker, I can't wait till I catch him. And it's so hard to fucking catch him because they're hiding in a fucking tent. You got fools in a tent that been in there for fucking two weeks and never come out. Only come out, pay a piss in a bottle and put it on the side. That's how lazy motherfuckers are these days. There is no more gangsters, Mark. There's no more cholos. There's no more solid-ass motherfuckers. You don't see them no more. You know what I mean? Like I said before, you used to be able to spot a cholo. Now... You see this young white boy walking down the street and he's talking about, where you from, I said, what the fuck? I said, tell him, where the fuck are you from? You know what I mean? You're the white boy, not me. Where are you from? And they would tell me and I'll tell them, oh man, you ain't gonna last in this game. You're not gonna last in this game. You don't have the heart. You don't have the fucking heart to see things done to people and not feel bad about it. Before, I was a bad person. I didn't feel bad about shit. I'd hurt a motherfucker and I wouldn't even give a fuck. I'm going to talk to you about my homies and we'll laugh and dude's in critical condition ready to die, but we'll laugh about it because we want him to die. You know, every time my homies die, every one of my homies that died, I got a phone call and they told me and I couldn't believe it. And I had to pinch myself like, nah, you know what I mean? But they'll tell the next person, then the next person tell the next person, then the next thing you know, it's blown up out of proportion. You know what I mean? That's why I come up here and I try to talk specifically about me, my family, and the way we do things. You know what I mean? I didn't want to take up too much of your time this time, Mark, because I know that you're a very busy man. You know, I have some other ones for you, but like I always tell you, I want to get up here and tell the truth. But I also want to get up here and tell the truth and not get arrested when I walk out that door. You know what I mean? I want to say, hey, these are all just fictional lies. I, you know, I'm telling you bullshit, but really in all due reality, Mark, they're all real. None of them are fake. None of them at all. I've lived every one of them. I've been through every aspect that I have told you about. I've been through all of them. I've been rubbed together so tight, Mark, that I thought that was it. This is the end of my life. And it wasn't my fault. It was the other motherfucker's fault. But being that we're doing it together, the guy up top don't want to hear, hey, my dog ate three of your grams. He'd be like, well, you better go to your dog shit and find it. You know what I mean? Your other food say, oh man, I lost the cloud while I was being with some broad, man. And I fell asleep, man, and she got me. And I'm like, that's the oldest fucking trick in the book. A bitch will take you, sleep with you. When you fall asleep, you'll be lucky even if you wake up with your pants. Because nowadays they ain't going through your shit. They're just snatching all your shit at one time. And then, you know, when they got shit, like I told my homie, let me see what you got. Let me see what you got. What do you got? The bitch had like five pairs of pants of mine and like four shirts. She didn't want to show me. So I picked them up and I looked at them and they were marked. And I was like, this is my fucking shirt. This is my shirt. These are my pants. Where do you get this shit at? There's only one way you can get it if you're going inside my van. And they deny it left and right. But I found some makeup and it didn't belong to Dana. And I was like, oh, yeah, somebody else was in here. You know what I mean? So, you know, they get in there just recently, a dude was breaking into the car and they shot him dead in the head. 
He hadn't even got in the car yet. He was barely putting the Slim Jim in and they shot him in the back of the head just because he was trying to steal a car. You know, that's really, really petty. I could just imagine if I have a gang of drugs on me and they know I got them and I start running. A lot of times I don't want to run because the last time I ran, they said they sick the canine, canines on me and ooh, those motherfuckers are no joke, Mark. Those fuckers hurt so bad. They bite and they don't let go. They rip and rip and rip. You know what I mean? And it hurts so fucking bad. You know what I mean? I want to get another dog, but I'm trying to think of what kind of dog to get. I don't want no big ass pit bull where everybody's afraid of it. I don't want a little ass chihuahua where motherfuckers get bit in half and one bah, is there in half. I want something more like a, like a, like a, like a terrier. Like an English terrier, something that sticks out, something you can groom, take care of, you know what I mean? Because right now I only have me. I really ain't taking care of anybody. My last little girl turned 18, what, a year ago. So I'm not obligated to any women, anybody, any own anybody amount of money. The only obligation that I have is to make sure that my homies are right or they're dealing dope. Because a lot of shit they're doing is crooked. You know what I mean? And it will catch up to them. You know, I relay these messages, Mark. And I want to relay more, but I know you ain't got much time. But I wanted to give you something today, tell you a little bit of my, but about, about my family, about the way they are, so everybody gets the input on me, how I was. And I speak about my family, and those are just a couple I speak about. There's many, many more. But the things that the things I, I have to go through my, you know, the, the the back files in my mind and remember, oh shit, this is what my uncle did. This is what my uncle did, and I never mentioned their names, but like I stated before. People have the right to be whoever they want to be. But when you grow up in a, the second generation and there's four before you and five in front of you, when you're in the middle, that's all what you're destined to be is a gangster. And that's all I want to be. I don't want to be anything else. I love the thrill of walking down the street and the people talking, get on the other side of the street. I love this. I love it because that means I can stay away from them more and see them less. You know what I mean, Mark? That's just a little something for you, Mark. Is that cool? Excellent, Johnny. You know, I've always got one for you, Mark. <laughs>